Vem är du? Jag är döden. Kommer du för att hämta mig? Jag har redan länge gått vid din sida. Det vet jag. Är du beredd? Min kropp är rädd. Inte jag själv. Hello and welcome to a brand new DM Tips video. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we're going to be talking about something that every DM will have to deal with at some point. Killing your players. This is something that's not always going to be fun, and it can be hard to do, but you have to do it. It is your duty to kill your players. If there are no consequences for their foolish actions, then why play at all? You owe it to your players to uphold the rules, and death is part of that. So today, we're going to talk about some things you'll want to consider when a PC is killed, how to deal with it narratively, some ideas for what might happen in the aftermath of a PC's death, rolling a new character for that PC, and of course, how you want to handle resurrection if that comes up. So, without further ado... <laughs> When a PC dies, assuming it fits the mood, do your best to make it epic. In a lot of cases, that character is effectively gone, so you don't have to feel bad about hamming it up or making them seem like a total badass in death. This isn't going to be appropriate for every single situation because sometimes PC deaths are kind of hilarious, but when it fits the mood accordingly, don't feel bad about really just making that character have their final moment in the sun. Also, if it's appropriate, try to give the player a moment to RP. Let them get out their last words or explain what they do with their final moments of life. I mean, once in a while, a character is going to get hit by a disintegration ray and they get disintegrated. That's just the way it is. But if they have that opportunity to RP while they're dying or have been stabbed or whatever the case is, it can really add to any dramatic narrative. Also, if you're in the middle of a battle when this happens, as is most often the case, use that character's death to crank up the dramatic tension. How does the monster or character that dealt the killing blow react? If they're just a wimpy kobold, maybe they start jumping for joy that they took down one of the heroes. Or if this is at the hands of a great villain who the party's been after for a while, maybe they laugh and utter some kind of remark. Whatever the case is though, this is a good point to build up the narrative you're trying to create. And a good way to end the narrative transition here is to, after the battle usually, explain where that character's soul goes. Does the lawful good paladin find he's drifting away from his friends and then suddenly appear in one of the realms of Celestia to be greeted by angels, a triumphant hero? Or maybe a warlock who made a pact with a fiend many years ago finally has to pay the price for his power he had in life. This kind of gives a sense of comfort to the players knowing their character still lives on in whatever afterlife exists in your world, or it might just further sadden the players if they don't have such a happy ending. But in any case, this kind of wraps things up nicely for that character. Now, after this is all said and done, you have to deal with that player. Their character has been taken care of, they have unfortunately passed on, but the player is still sitting in the room. Depending on the situation, you have a few different options here. If this happens at the beginning or in the middle of a session, you might just want to consider letting that player take over one of the NPCs with the party if they have one. Maybe that player is also simply content to sit back and relax and watch the rest of the game. Or if you've already been playing for a few hours and you're thinking of wrapping things up soon, maybe this is a good spot to just end the session altogether. If there is no viable option to keep that player engaged, and it seems like the session's gonna be going on for another couple hours because maybe you just started, I would recommend asking that player to start rolling up their new character. Ask them to start looking at classes, that kind of thing, and it's gonna take a little bit of time to do that anyways. So let them do it now, and if this happens to be a very long session, maybe they'll even be able to join in before the end of it, or you could very well end the session with the introduction of their new character. That's most likely not going to happen, but if you are playing with an experienced playgroup and you kind of know each other very well, that is definitely an option you have to. So, between games is where you're going to do most of your work here, actually. Aside from that very rare and specific situation I just mentioned, this is when you're going to want to meet with that player, whether it's just... Facebook chatting or in person, and actually work on a new character for them. Let them roll up their new character, pitch you ideas for how they want them to join into the story, and then try to weave them in in a fun and interesting way. Because this is a very rare opportunity for you as a DM to introduce a new character from outside the game who might be interwoven with the current story narrative. Now granted, if you're not playing a super story-driven game, then that's easy. They just roll up the new character, you say, great. 
in the next session they show up and you introduce them, but you do have an opportunity here, just keep that in mind. Another thing I've noticed as well is when you try to make an effort to work that new character into the story in an exciting way, it kind of lessens the blow of the character death from the last session, and it just gives the player something else to get excited about. I mean, obviously playing D&D is exciting in its own right, but when you've got a new character, you tend to get excited about all the possibilities and then having it interwoven into the story in a neat way just adds to that sense of excitement, which pushes down the sense of sadness over the death from your previous character. How's it hanging, Death? You will come with me. No, we can't. We gotta get back to the babes. Now, this being Dungeons and Dragons, a game set in a fantasy world, death is not always the end. At lower levels, it often is truly a death sentence, but beyond a certain point, it just kind of becomes a minor, or in some cases, major inconvenience. And when it comes to resurrection, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is something you want to consider before you even start playing. And if you've already started playing and you haven't considered this yet, please consider it, because once a character is resurrected, you can't really go back on this. You want to set a precedent for your world and how resurrection is handled. Is it easy to resurrect someone, or is it very difficult? One of the biggest ways that can be impacted in your game is how common are diamonds. To cast a lot of the resurrection spells, you need a diamond as the material component. So sure, maybe a lot of people know resurrection magic, but if you can't actually get the diamond to do so, it becomes very difficult. It might be a task and a half to find one of these diamonds because they're just that rare. Or is it the inverse of that, where the rest of the party can just head down to the market with 500 gold pieces, find a suitable diamond, and say, yep, this'll do, and then head off to the church to get their buddy back in the fray. Whether your world follows the rules of situation A, B, or somewhere in between, that's fine. Just establish that ahead of time and think about that while you still have time to really think it through. If it is extremely difficult to resurrect someone or to find whatever spells or components they need to find, let the player play as a different character for the journey or quest to go get those items. Maybe they're just a hired mercenary that the party has brought along with them for some extra muscle, or maybe it's a relative of the dead character who decides to join the party to help bring their sibling back. There's a million different ways you could justify that choice, but ultimately you don't want the player to suffer for the rules in your world, you just want their characters to suffer for it. Another thing to consider here too is what are the consequences of resurrection? Coming back over that threshold from death to life should be a very interesting experience at the least if not a very traumatic one. There are a bunch of tables out there that you can find online or you can even make your own, but basically the idea here is in your world is death, again, just kind of a minor inconvenience, which is fine. Or do you want there to be more of a consequence? If someone comes back from the dead, maybe one of their eyes doesn't work the way it used to. Maybe some of their stats are permanently lowered. Maybe their maximum hit points goes down by a certain number. Whatever the case is, it could even be purely cosmetic. It's just that idea that every time someone comes back, they leave a little bit of themselves behind. So if you have a character who's been resurrected five or six times, maybe they're getting to a point where it's like, if I die again, I don't want to come back because you're just going to be this hollow form of the person you once were. But like I said, if you want resurrection to just be easy, that's totally fine, but you need to establish this ahead of time. That's really the key thing to remember from this video, if nothing else. Another thing I've seen deployed in games in the past, which is pretty neat, honestly, is the personification of death. When someone dies, what happens? Does their soul just leave? Or is there actually a physical being, death, who just comes to collect them and bring them to the afterlife? And in that situation, as is the classic fantasy trope, are the characters allowed to challenge death to some kind of game for the right to survive past when their time has been called? This idea of challenging death for the rights to survive has been ingrained in our culture for a really long time. There's even ancient depictions of death playing chess, so take from that what you will. But that is an option you have in your world. Then you'll want to think about what does death look like? Is he the classic Grim Reaper figure, or is he more unique? And when does this happen? Is this a situation where someone's being brought back from the dead, and then death basically stops them and says, whoa, wait a second, you're already dead, you can't go back. Maybe that's when they have to challenge him to whatever game they want, at which point if they lose, maybe they still get to go back, but that's when they leave something behind. And if they win, they get to go back fully restored. 
This gives you a really good chance to let your players be creative as well. It never ceases to amaze me the kind of challenges players will come up with to challenge death to. I mean, sure, they might challenge them to a simple chess game or something like that. It often has interesting and quite entertaining results. Anyways, that was my, kind of my spiel about character death in D&D. Ultimately, what this boils down to is be prepared, don't be afraid to actually kill characters, and try to make it as interesting as possible when it does happen. Because if it hasn't happened to you yet, I guarantee you it will. So, if you do like what I do here and you want to support the channel, please subscribe. I have at least one or two new videos every week. And of course, in the description below, you can check out my Patreon, Discord, Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. And as always, I do want to say thank you to all you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.